Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of BrillMedia.co and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today our guest is Angela Fickin, psychotherapist and entrepreneur. Angela, thank you for being here. Over the last three years, you've uh, turned your practice into a business that sells products and courses. Your course is called Breaking Every Day into Slivers, Not Chunks. Angela, tell us a little bit about your journey to become a psychotherapist and how you turned that knowledge and yeah, thank. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Robert, for having me. This is such a fun opportunity um, to talk about the journey, uh, which is all entrepreneurs know um, it is a journey. <laughs> so uh, I got my start at McLean Hospital, which is one of the world psychiatric hospitals here in Belmont, Massachusetts. So I'm right in Boston. Um, and uh, it was there that I was really able to learn from some of the best people in uh, the country with uh, training in depression and anxiety disorders. And from there, I was trained in some of the kind of gold standard therapy modalities to treat stress and anxiety, cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical behavioral therapy. I won't go into the weeds with those, but they are gold standards in treating stress and anxiety. And from there, I, I left McLean um, after years of being the senior social worker on one of the units there to Harvard University, where I was a primary therapist for undergrad and graduate students. And it was there that I was really able to finally follow people for a long period of time. And being at a hospital, people don't stay very long. And at um, Harvard, I was really able to spend really a lo- quite some time with students um, learning uh, how to fine tune my skill set that I had and seeing the pressure cooker of environment, but the skills that I had um, and the expertise I had was really helpful for them in kind of managing their own stress and anxiety so that they could have a flourishing career, um, not just um, academically, but socially too. Um, And after that, I decided, okay, I've always wanted a private practice. I wanna hang up my shingle full time. So I made the leap after the push of my um, husband to say like, you wanted it, just do it. So I did. Um, and, uh, it was then that I thought my journey was complete, that I hung up my shingle. It was my dream. I did it. And little, little did you know that that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. Um, and, uh, at that point, what ended up happening is that people were coming to me from different, all, all over the Boston area. It wasn't just students. It was people in the startup world, um, people in the financial realm, um, new law associates, people just kind of going into high stress jobs for the first time and really kind of figuring out like, how do I manage everything that's coming to me? And what was really exciting is that what I was able to teach them, they were finding life changing, that their job didn't change, but how they manage stress did. And so their happiness factor increased. So it was a wonderful experience to be able to see. But what the fe- the feedback that they gave me was that you were really hard to find, Angela. <laughs> it took them months or even years to find a therapist that had the skill set I have. I thought Boston is not a big city. You can literally walk the city in a day if you wanted to hit all the like the hot spots. And I thought, okay, if if you're having a hard time finding me, who else out there might benefit from what I can teach? And that's when. I went from just hang up my shingle to the entrepreneur world of writing articles, um, creating a blog post, uh, and trying to get the message out there that you don't have to sit in a pot of stress. There are actually effective skills out there that can be essentially life changing and you will have them for the rest of your life. Uh, And how do I get this to as many people who would be interested? And it doesn't have to be necessarily in Boston where you have to see me in my office, but you can be anywhere. And that's why I decided to create different products to help people get access to what I can teach, knowing that you don't have to see me in my office to get what I can give. So, I mean, did you find that your patients were... um were coming to similar conclusions like did you you must have seen a commonality across across the people you were seeing can you share your process on how you it's hard to create a course i mean <laughs> i've tried and I, and I haven't done this successfully um it's it's not an it's not a particularly intuitive thing at least for me 
like what are the pro steps that you take to to create a, a successful course? I mean, it's clearly something everyone wants, right? People want to have stress relief. Yes, uh, and it was it was an undertaking. Um, I call it my mini dissertation because that's what it felt like, and I wrote it, you know, six months pregnant too. So it was, you know, it was um, a really big project, um, and I just went through all the areas that I. Uh, kind of see people come into my practice who are looking for stress relief. This is relationships, self-care, their relationships with themselves, family, um, challenging relationships at work, whether it's coworkers or your boss, or just managing productivity at work. So procrastination, um, perfectionism. A lot of people in high stress, high power jobs do have a level of perfectionism, which has been incredibly helpful for them and the reasons why they're successful, but it can also backfire. Uh, and I, I just went through my Rolodex almost of who comes in, what are the problems that I keep seeing, and that stress does impact every aspect of our life. It can. Um, so I really wanted to give a full, robust course so that no matter what is happening in your life, whenever it's happening, this course will touch on that. So if you are struggling with negative thoughts, for example, this course talks about how do you combat negative thinking? How do you stop self-doubt from steamrolling and uh, really take charge and look at the reality of your successes? So if you're struggling with that, you can pick that up. And in six months, if you realize, wow, I'm having a really stressful time at work, my productivity's down, there's a module for that. So this course, you can keep going back to no matter kind of what area in your life uh, stress is coming up. Um, so that's why I really wanted to create a robust course that was, would be um, no matter where you are in your life, you, you can find benefit to this. How do you, and so how long is a, like, how long is a course? Like when you, when you, when you're a customer of it, like how is it broken out and, and how do you think about the different modules? Sure. So it's, it's seven modules, uh, audio and written. Um, like I said, it's kind of my dissertation, so it's, there's definitely a written part. Um, each piece goes through several examples of different types of stress. So for example, one is sleep and how sleep uh, impacts, um, gets impacted by stress. And I go through many different examples of how that can uh, happen for people, how that gets triggered, uh, whether it's difficulty falling asleep, interrupted sleep or early morning awakening and sometimes it's all three which is really awful but the that each module comes with skills specifically tailored to looking at that so i will walk through both for you know audio and written whatever method helps you kind of learn the best um to walk through like how do you try these skills so you can get better sleep Wow, that's so important. I this morning as we as we're recording this, I was in front of my computer at four four fifteen in the morning. My dog woke <laughs> me up. <laughs> I to go back to sleep. Yes, that's cool. So I get it. I, yes, that's particularly yeah. resonant for me right now. Yeah, and we and we all do. You know, it's like I I mean I specialize in stress and anxiety. Doesn't mean I'm immune from it. Uh, you know, I have to practice my skills sometimes on the, on the regular. Uh, but the important thing is once you have your toolbox uh, of skills, you can always access them. So I know when I'm up at 4.50 in the morning, I look at the alarm, I'm like, oh, you know, it hasn't even gone off. I look at the clock and it's, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning. I have an idea of what I can pull from that gets me back to sleep pretty quickly. Um, and that's, that's helpful. So it doesn't mean that you're, it's never going to happen. It's just more of like when it does happen, you know exactly what you can use that will help you kind of get that, get back to, to sleep so you can get some good quality sleep again. And did you, um, did you work with a specialist to help you create the course? I mean, not the content of the course, but like how to structure it. Cause that's always fascinating for me. Yeah. So my, um, my everything person, Kristen Marquette of Marquette Media, she is my, I, I call her my business partner. She does a tremendous amount of work for me. We're like a team of two. Um, and she told me, you need to write a course. Uh, the information I have, she's like, this could be really helpful for people. Um, and I didn't know that there were online courses. Again, you know, me with my shingle up, I thought that's as far as it went. Um, so she really helped me go through like here are 
you know, what's everything that you want to share? And then she did the course creation. I wrote it, I did the audio and she did um, everything else uh, and really helped kind of coach me through what, it, what, I, what I needed to say, the kind of outline of it, um, the, how it looks like, you know, it's, it's really trying to make it an easy course that's accessible um, and not get too in the weeds. Uh, and she was really instrumental in that. So she is, like I said, she is my everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. Angela, what is your go-to market strategy? How long has the course existed in, in the marketplace? So the course has been um, around for about uh, a year. And uh, our, our biggest area has been Pinterest. Um, and a lot of um, our, my, our foot traffic has been through through that um, uh, area, which has been really phenomenal. Uh, and we do a lot of uh, infographics, our own infographics. So I will create them and Kristen will design them and pin them. Um, my newsletters go up there. I write a newsletter every month. Uh, so that's been one of the main uh, areas for our marketing that's been really wonderful. Or is it organic posting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and, so, and so it's organic posting and you're posting infographics. So you're really like, so tell us a little bit more about the marketing strategy. I mean, really what we're interested in on this, on this podcast is what types of interesting thing entrepreneurs are doing and how they're growing and scaling those businesses. So this mm -hmm. is, this is fantastic. Yeah. So with um, the infographics, Kristen will say, Hey, you know, you um, had uh, a lot of hits on your newsletter about, um, so for example, uh, my newsletter that just came out this week is on setting boundaries and setting limits. Uh, so for example, a lot of women uh, have difficulty saying no uh, to things and that can create a lot of burnout and that can lead to a lot of kind of feeling stressed and irritable and all this other stuff that doesn't feel good. So if you can look at how you set limits and boundaries, uh, that can be so helpful. So in my newsletter, I talk about how you know if you need to set some personal boundaries and what are some ways that you can say no uh, and not feel bad about it. Uh, so for example, that newsletter might have some nice nuggets of information. Kristen and I will create uh, an infographic and then pin and then put, she does her magic on Pinterest. And then once that gets uh, sent out into Pinterest land, people can click on that and that goes right to my website. Um, so people can sign up for my newsletters. Uh, people can take a look at the other products that I have uh, and just kind of get to know me a little bit better. Uh, so that's been kind of one of our, uh, main, like gold standards for, for marketing. Fascinating. Do you, do you find that most of your customers, um, or, or the, the, the folks who are watching your, taking your course, are they, are they women? They are, um, uh, the, the main, um, yes, the, the main kind of demographic, uh, are women, uh, and primarily in, people that I tend to see in my practice kind of in a high stress jobs, um, really looking for strategies that are going to be effective and they're something that they can learn on the quick, knowing that they might not have the hour for me, um, but that they want the tools that I can teach. Got it. And when you're, when you're, you know, if I, if I take a step back and, I, and look at the totality of your career, there's, it seems like there's, two key elements. There's a psychotherapist component, then there's the entrepreneur component. Tell us, tell us about like, when you go back to hanging up your shingle and you, and, and, and you're seeing patients, what, um, how do you grow? Tell us about how you grow that business. And I want to see if there, what, what overlaps and similarities there are with, with the entrepreneurship side, because being a business, being a psychotherapist is also being a business owner, right? Like, yes, yes. You have all the uh, founders of PL and time management and process and all that stuff. Right. Your own marketing referrals, right? Like how do you, how do you keep it growing? How do you keep it steady? Being a psychotherapist, there's a, there's a, I mean, and this is entrepreneur world anyway, like the hustle never ends. Like you're always hustling your, your next client that you see when that wraps up, like who's coming in the door. So you, you have to kind of keep it fresh. Um, and everybody does it differently in my, in my field. Uh, but I had a couple of uh, risks, I guess I should say, that tended to, that went well for me, um, leaps of faith. 
So the first is when I went from Harvard uh, to private practice, I was on insurance. And I felt like that was a nice way to transition because I was guaranteed a certain amount of people coming into my office, uh, people wanting to use insurance and I could, I took insurance. And so that filled my practice pretty quickly. Also people from Harvard wanted to continue to follow me, which they could. Uh, and within you know a few months of being in full-time practice, I was full. Uh, and then I was doing that steady for about uh, two years, time blurs, but I think it was about two years. And um, my some of my mentors uh, were telling me they weren't on insurance, I should consider getting off insurance. It would it not only increase my income, um, but it would be more free in the sense that I wouldn't have to be beholden to insurance companies for diagnosis codes and uh, kind of being told how often I could see somebody. So there are a lot of rules when you're involved in insurance uh, and it would be kind of a, a, a freeing moment for my career. And I had heard that for a long time, uh, but I was nervous. I was nervous to, you know, what might happen to my practice. I didn't know if this was going to work or not. Um, and then again, loving push of my husband, he comes in here a lot in my life of kind of life transitions and saying, just do it. Um, so I did. And it was honestly the best move I made for my practice, because at that point I wasn't beholden to insurance in terms of how often I could see somebody for how many sessions that just opened up the door, but my income also increased. So it, I felt more empowered. I felt more free to kind of think about now, what do I want to do? Uh, and that's kind of when um, the uh, entrepreneur next step came in where I decided like, hey, why don't I try writing? Uh, that is something that I've always enjoyed. People seem to like the strategies I'm teaching. Let me try writing a blog and see what happens. And that's kind of how that trajectory uh, grew up. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I can't hear you. My fault. Totally <laughs> my fault. I muted myself. I, I like muting myself. Um, <laughs> so you had your practice for two years and uh, you saw more freedom. When, when, when you made the transition, did you make the transition to this, the course, or did you make the transition to taking, um, to, to taking patients outside of the, the health insurance, which I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh yeah, sure. So I, I went from insurance to no insurance. That was Got the it. first step of like inching my way out towards, let's seeing where this goes. Um, and the course came maybe it years later, years later, it was a process. Um, and I think part of being an entrepreneur is you're taking risks all the time and there's no manual for what you're doing. Um, no one's training you. This is how you be an entrepreneur, but you know, it's, it's constantly going outside of your comfort zone. So Kristen, uh, was telling me, you know, you need to do this course. You need to do this course. You need to do this course. I'm like, yeah, okay. Let me just get comfortable over here. Um, so it took her, um, some time for, for me to finally get it like, okay, now I can see myself writing this course. Um, of course, when I'm six months pregnant and about to have a child, I'll sure. Why not? But you know, it's, I think it was, it made me anxious to write this course. Is it going to be good? What do I put in it? How do I do this? Uh, and, I uh, I think everything in my career previous to that kind of got me to the moment where I could say like, okay, now I, I feel confident I can write this course and I think it can be good. As you, as you focus on your psychotherapist, as you, as you were focusing on your psychotherapy, psychotherapy practice, were you um, doing any marketing whatsoever or did, was it all referrals? It was all referrals. So right. yeah, it was, it was people from Harvard, from McLean hospital. It was through other people I was seeing like, Hey, you saw me two years ago. Can you see my roommate? You know, it's, or, um, I heard you saw so-and-so, can you see, you know, my friend? So it, it would come through word of mouth. Um, but, uh, so that was, that was really my strong referral base for, for some time. And now it's more people find me on like Google, um, or, um, certain articles I've been quoted on. Um, somebody th found me through Instagram. 
uh, and started seeing me that way. Uh, so it's been interesting to see how um, I get found now because it's very different than it was before. That's interesting. So, I mean, you know, writing and getting quotes and, and having having some social media is is a great I mean, it's all referrals at the end of the day. And I, yes. and I imagine that, you know, if you have the testimonials and you have the word of mouth, that's that's the best type of business to be in, mm -hmm. which which is how we've grown as well. Right. Like, uh, the, the, I think the difference, though, between um, your type of business and our type of business is at least for ours, we, we maxed out. I mean, we 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 have all the referrals that we that we've taken and it's relationships that i've built over over the course of my career and now it's time to like span out it's very different than i think when something has to be when there's when there's a health component you definitely want the best right and mm -hmm. you're going to get the best when you know there's it you are spoken for from someone else who's trusted so yes yeah yeah and that feels that feels really it feels really good um yeah i mean it's, it's a great feeling to know that you are like i'm effective right like that feels good to, to know that somebody came in feeling one way and left feeling better and more confident and being able to see that transition and be a part of that is like you know i guess you, that, that's my jam <laughs> do you do you um do you have any i feel like like the pinnacle of um health practitioners is writing a book maybe writing a journal writing in journals certainly mm -hmm. but you know like the minute you're when you're ready to break out and you're you're trying to become you know like i look at professor scott galloway right he's he's, he's an educator right and but he's broken out by writing books having businesses and he's on podcasts mm -hmm. do you have any aspiration to to write books because a lot of people feel that when you write a book and you're an author, that's the next level of global success or, or national success. Yes, it's funny that you say that. That is in the goal for 2021. Wow. Um, and uh, we're working on, probably gonna start working on that this summer uh, and working on kind of chapters and ideas of you know content, what might be most helpful for people and how, how to kind of put that together. So that is actually on our to-do list. Um, with some exclamation points. So that's interesting that you brought that up. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, what does uh, 2021 look like? How did, um, and, and, you know, if there's any other stuff around 2021, I mean, like, like, how do you allocate your time is how much of your time goes to the practice? How much goes to the course? You even do any marketing for the course? I mean, I understand that there is marketing being created, but is it your, your marketing person? How much impact do you have on the day-to-day -day of the marketing of the course? Yeah, so um, Kristen does all of the marketing and she certainly, we collaborate in terms of any email sequences we need to write, um, the sales page, pictures, aesthetic, um, the, the feel of the brand. Uh, that is definitely the both of us. And then the execution is all Kristen. Um, so that that's kind of how we do it. And then with my practice, there is a slight ebb and flow. Um, I think a lot of psychotherapists in the pandemic have certainly said their practices have been more full than ever. That is certainly true for me. Um, and it's been a hard juggle between, um, you know, my private practice and being full and then having time to do the brand work, which I very much enjoy and want to do more of and yeah. being full um, and being a mom. <laughs> so it's like this, like, how do I, how do I allocate my time today? And I think that's just what I've had to break it down to is just like every day is going to be different. Um, what gets my time uh, based on kind of that priority? Um, well, I, ima I imagine that, you know, with your course, you really have the ability to impact a lot more lives than you do with your psychotherapy. Um, just it's it's a little it's a little less deep psychotherapy i imagine long-term relationships with with folks but if, if your goal is to impact a lot of lives i mean that's the web is the way to do it digital communication right right yeah and i think that's the that's the juggle between knowing that uh and trying to, and and wanting to honor the time with the people i see so that is that's 
the kind of the ongoing work for myself is, you know, how do I find that balance knowing that this is really important, this gives me more reach um, and it gives access for more people. Um, so it makes sense to really kind of allocate that time um, and knowing that that balance constantly has to get recalibrated. Do you, do you find that the work that you do in your practice um, informs, like, do you have, do you have any intention of creating like a second course or a follow-up course? Like I imagine your practice is the, is the, is the thing that may inform the insights for the book, a mm -hmm. second course, like how do you, does that come organically? Is it happening? How do you think about that? Or is it just something that's just a natural flow and you don't, it just is? Yeah, so it, I think it's a mishmash of everything, right? So sometimes, I mean, I'll be going for a walk and I'll think, oh my God, this is a great topic. I wanna write about this next month for the blog. Or um, I recently uh, got a toddler a toddler course, because um, my daughter's three, and uh, I thought it was such a great course. It was video, it was really simple. I thought, why don't I do a mini stress management course, three modules, keep it simple, keep it, make it video. Uh, and that's actually uh, in the works right now. Uh, so it's sometimes it happens or organically and it just pops in the, to my, my head. And other times it's like, I will actually be taking my own course or doing my own reading. And through that, I, I kind of gather ideas. Um, so right now it's um, the next kind of thing that I'm working on is a mini stress management course, three modules, uh, working on uh, cognitive behavioral therapy 101, essentially, how do you combat negative thinking and self-doubt, talking about boundaries, how you set them um, when you struggle with saying no, and that can be in so many areas. And then uh, the third piece is how do you know the difference between good stress and bad stress? Because we can have good stress and it can be incredibly effective, um, and you want to know the difference um, and knowing that can get you uh, different sets of coping strategies uh, and be a wealth of data and information. So th that that's essentially the mini course, um, which is different from the, the big kahuna of the, the, the seven module uh, stress management course, the breaking every day into slivers nut chunks course. So uh, it, it will be different um, in that instead of written and audio, it will be just video. Um, and hopefully have the feel that, you know, we're just sitting here having a conversation talking about as if you're in, in session with me. That's very interesting. What, um, what, what, you know, for, for business owners, entrepreneurs, senior executives, what's one or two things you can leave us with about how to think about stress? I think even, even something as simple as paying attention when something happens, is often a good first step in really understanding that I feel this way because of stress or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the ideas that business people should be thinking about as as we go about our day and we might encounter stress? And sure. Us, yeah. You know, I, I think the biggest uh, skill I recommend um, is first taking a look at, you know, why you are feeling stress. Like, where is it happening in your life? And what I've been seeing recently uh, in the working world for people is that, um, especially working from home, you're always working. Uh, you can always work. <laughs> it's different than, you know, hanging up at five o'clock to go have some drinks with some friends and then, you know, dinner and then you're home and you're at the gym and you're having a life. It's so different. You can just work. Notifications are on. Um, people are checking email at 10 o'clock at night from bed. Um, so, it's been, and then people are saying, I don't know why I feel stressed. It's like, you feel stressed because you're always working uh, and you're not shutting it off. So it seems simple and it is, but it, it can be hard too, where you have to look at your time as a hot commodity and who and what gets your time and how you want to spend your time. So it, could it be, you know, you set off, you shut off the notifications after five o'clock, you, Kind of make sure that you're not responding to all emails uh, at all hours of the day, but you can kind of pick one thing and just try it out and then go to the next thing. So I have people in my practice that have started shutting off notifications after five o'clock uh, and it's felt uh, stressful for them because they feel like they want to, they have to be on or they need to be found, but they realize, okay, notifications are off and the company didn't go bankrupt. Um, every, nothing burned down. 
And then the next thing is, okay, maybe I won't respond to these emails as frequently. Um, nobody needs to, you know, these emails aren't urgent. I can wait till tomorrow. So there's these small things that you can actually do to help you reduce your stress. It usually is kind of looking at how you're working uh, and how you just want to make these small shifts that can kind of give you the most bang for your buck. The other thing that I tell people is to think about what you want to put into your life uh, periodically throughout the day that's going to help you refuel your well being tank. And it doesn't have to be about moving mountains, uh, it's the small things can, that can really um, give you the most uh, big effect. So, for example, it could be getting up and stretching every hour. We're sitting all day, most of us anyway. You know, it, it's how you get up and just move your body. Uh, hydrating and getting up and getting some water. I have people that weren't going to the bathroom. They were just sitting all day. I'm like, go to the bathroom, you know, take care of yourself. Um, eat lunch, take a lunch break. You know, it's like people, the company, okay. it's just not going to, you know, um, implode because you decided to take five minutes for yourself. And as they started to slowly inch towards that, they realized like, oh, not only do I feel better because I'm doing more things for myself, I'm actually more efficient. I'm working less. I'm more efficient because I have more in my well-being tank. Uh, and the company is not, you know, um, falling to pieces. So it's uh, those small things that I think are tangible for people because they're not big risks, um, but they offer big results. And if people want to sign up for this course, it sounds like a fantastic course. Where, where, what's the URL? Sure. So there's two. Um, if people want to check out my website, it's progresswellness.com. Mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, course website is worried to wellbalanced.com. Worried to well balanced dot com. Let me scroll that right now. Progress wellness dot com and worried to well balanced dot com. Very cool. Angela Ficken, thank you so much for being with us today. It's great to talk about stress. It's a thing that affects all of us and um, it sounds like you're the person to talk to when we're feeling uh, uncomfortable in our own skin. Sure. Come on by anytime. Um, and thank you so much. This was such a fun conversation. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. Have a good one. Thank you, you too.